YouTube, good morning YarnTube, good morning YouTube. How are you this bright and sunny morning? We've got a beautiful sunny morning here in just south of Cambridge in England in the UK. It's sun, Sunday the 5th of November. Remember, remember the 5th of November. Gunpowder, treason and plot. Oh yes, that's how I greeted Benedict this morning. Remember, remember. Oh. So I am going to talk about podcasts this morning. That's what this entire video is going to be about. Um, I do listen to audiobooks. I do tend to listen to books that I've already read on audiobooks because I don't concentrate so much on an audiobook. Um, and they tend to have to be clean. So they have to have clean language. And although they may have an, an adult theme, it has to be quite clean. So I can't have anything that's particularly rude or anything like that because I play them in the house when Benedict's around and he's nine. So I don't like anything like that. However, with podcasts, I do allow myself to listen to podcasts that are um, may occasionally use adult language because they're shorter and I can listen to that when I know he's not in the house that hour or that half an hour and I know he's not in the house and I'm not going to be as invested in it. Somehow that seems to work. Um, so podcasts, I do listen to all types of podcasts. In a particular, I guess the ones that I get really hooked into tend to be the crime ones. I do tend to um, gravitate towards podcasts about true crime. The per first podcast that I really got interested in like, I mean, I listen to various ones that are published by the BBC, in particular Wittertainment, which is the film review show by Simon May and Mark Kermode. I've listened to that. I've listened to that on the radio and as a podcast for years and years and years. Other than that, I wasn't particularly faithful to any particular type of podcast until Serial came along. Um, and I think so, I mean, it's such a phenomenon and most people have heard of it, even if they haven't listened to it. So that was the first one that I really got gripped into and that I was waiting for it to happen each week. Um, the other ones that I have listened to have tended to be serial-esque, I suppose. Um, in, so, or even the ones that are about serial. So, for example, I used to listen to Undisclosed, um, which was a spin-off from Serial where they looked in absolute minute detail um, about the case and they were working for the defence, which is what has happened in the end. They've actually helped the defence tremendously with their investigations. And that was, that was something I really enjoyed, which led me to Crime Writers On, and that is one of my current favourite podcasts. So this is a weekly podcast, sometimes bi-weekly, um, where they talk, so it's a podcast about other podcasts and sometimes about TV shows, uh, in particular about crime podcasts, because they're all crime writers. So I've mentioned crime writers on before. So they're all crime writers of one kind or another. And they review other podcasts. So, for example, they started by reviewing Serial. So it is a fantastic show for getting recommendations for other podcasts. Now, you may not always agree with what they think about the podcast, but it does give you, because they get so many recommendations themselves and then they listen to it. So you do end up picking up lots of recommendations is kind of what I'm trying to say. Not sure this is the most fluent I've ever been, but it is Sunday morning, so you will have to forgive me on that. So they're realising. So um, Crime Writers On. So there are two that I have listened to recently that Crime Writers On, the podcast has recommended and I have loved. So the first one, I've got my phone down here because I kept them on my phone, is Bow Bowerville or Bowerville. Um, and it was, I think it was five podcasts. Yes, five episodes. None of them that long. Um, they tended to be up to half an hour. So the whole thing took two and a half hours to listen to. It is a podcast from The Australian, and it is about a case in um, Australia where three children, um, a 16-year-old, a 4-year-old, and then a 16-year-old, all went missing over a five-month period. Now, immediately, I would not normally listen to this because it's about children. However, it didn't focus on what was done to the children. It was more about... Um, there was somebody that the whole town said did it who has gone through two trials and has been founded has been found not guilty has been acquitted 
um, in these two trials. And it was about the whole idea of it. Um, and it was also a lot about racial tension um, in this particular town. And, and it was fascinating. It was absolutely fascinating. So th- this was Barrowville. Um, I use, because I've got an iPhone, I use the podcasts that are on there, which I guess is, is an iTunes. I gather it should be available across all the different types. If you Wherever you listen to podcasts, I gather it is available. So you search under Barrowville, um, or the Australian, I gather. Um, and it was brilliant. Absolutely superb. So I highly recommend that one. For a true crime podcast. The one that I have actually finished this morning, and which is one of the reasons why I'm doing this, is um, it, the podcast is called Reply All, which is published by Gimlet. And I gather that is incredibly, it's a well known podcast that deals with stuff about the internet. And it is in particular, it is four, uh, four episodes called On the Inside. And let me get the the number so it starts at episode 64 and it's called on the inside and it is the four podcasts so it's episode 64 65 66 and 67 and it's a four part series within this larger podcast so the actual podcast is called reply all and it's episode 64 to 67 called on the inside and it is the most I mean, it's the closest thing to serial that I've actually listened to. And the crime writers felt exactly the same. It was gripping. I started yesterday afternoon and um, I actually took some some knitting to bed at like 11 o'clock last night and was trying to finish it, but I was too tired. And then I, I got when I got up this morning, my first thought was, oh, well, I'll, I'll finish the podcast because it was so good. And the ending... <gasps> I just shivers, absolute shivers. So it's really good. I highly recommend that. So the podcast is called Reply All. It's episode 64 to 67 on the inside. I highly recommend that. The other podcast that I have been listening to, which relates to one of the books I read. So I read True Crime Addict by James Rinner, and that was about the case of the missing persons case of Maura Murray. And there is a podcast called Missing Maura Murray. Um, so I didn't even know this. They just happened to refer to it on Crime Writers. And so I went and looked it up. And it is a detailed look about the case and actually does involve James Rinner at some point. So what episode am I on at the moment? I'm on episode nine further down the rabbit hole with James Rinner and they're really interesting because they're docu- uh, documentary makers the two people that um, talk about it on the on the um, podcast are documentary makers and they have a different take on what a podcast is so it's not a standard podcast I would say and then they they get James Rinner in and I think the podcast is really going to develop you don't need to know what the um, true crime don't need to know about the case be- beforehand to listen to it and enjoy it. Um, having read the book, I'm getting. I think I'm coming to it in a slightly different way. Um, but it's fascinating. That's absolutely fascinating. So that's probably all, all I'm going to say at the moment. Oh, one last one. It's um, a podcast about giving recommendations for listening to things so radio programs which again might be useful for you because sometimes it's trying to find things that other people have listened to that like the same things that you do is that kind of recommendation isn't it so it's called fortunately with fee and jane and it's by two radio presenters who i have loved for years fee glover and jane garvey Um, they are radio mainly radio 4 bbc radio 4 presenters Occasionally they go on Radio 5, but they're, you know, primarily on on BBC Radio 4. And they both listen to an awful lot of radio. Obviously, radio is in their blood. And um, so they talk about programmes that they've listened to. And I've only listened to the first couple, I gather. Let's have a look, see how many. There are 25 um, episodes out and I've only listened to the first couple. This was a recommendation by the husband, actually. He said, I think you should try it or really enjoy it. And the first couple that I've listened to, I've thought, brilliant, and have led me to listen to other things as well. So there we go. So this is basically a video for your ears.
<laughs> this morning. That's what I give to you. Um, I've been reading in the comments that I'm having breakfast with quite a lot of people, which is lovely. I had my breakfast a, a couple of hours ago. Um, so if you're having your breakfast at the moment, how lovely. What are you having? Is it nutritious or is it um, just what you can grab before you go somewhere or... Do you plot and plan your breakfast? There are some times at night I am thinking about what I'm going to have for breakfast to make it extra scrummy. And other times it's just what I always have, which is, tends to be muesli. Um, so, yeah, so let me know. Let me know what your breakfast plans are for either today or tomorrow. Well, this has been lovely, BookTube, Yarn Tube and YouTube. I think we should do this again sometime. Bye.